So today we'll be working on a kingfisher, which is a type of bird. Looks like this. They're very fun and very colorful. Um, I always think they're really interesting because they have complementary colors, which are like the blue and the well, blue and the orange. <laughs> um, so for this one, we're going to make it fairly realistic, but then also throw in a little bit of fun ink lines to make it a little bit more exciting because a lot of times when you're using ink you don't have to make it exactly like your picture. Sometimes you can throw in some extra lines just to make it seem a little more whimsical and kind of adding a little bit more to the movement of whatever you're drawing. So the first thing I would start with my Kingfisher. Um, I already have it pre-drawn onto my little piece of watercolor paper. So when you're trying to draw an animal, you really always want to still think about your basic shapes. So even though this body, you know, looks kind of complicated, there's a wing, there's a tail, basically all it is is really kind of a thin oval, and then the head is kind of a sideways oval. So starting with those and really making sure you have kind of the angle of your bird correct will really help you make it look realistic. So once I have it drawn on, um, you can always transfer it or you can draw it right onto your watercolor paper if you know it's a really simple drawing because you don't want to have a lot of eraser lines on your drawing. Then what I'm going to start with is just outlining my bird. It's always good if you have an ink pen that is full and won't run out in the middle of a drawing, which happens. It happens to me all the time. <laughs> So and then as you're outlining, you can always throw in a little bit of lines going outside of your bird. It can be kind of replicating kind of the direction that the wing is going. It could almost be like sketching lines. You don't want them to look too definitive. You want them to be pretty light because um, then it might just look like you kind of messed up on your bird. So. You know, it's up to you how much of these lines you want to do. I might do maybe some going down from my bird, you know, just to make it look very loose. Um, even replicating some of the wood texture, it could be almost like an outline around it. And this would even be really fun with your, uh, if you have a calligraphy pen or, you know, one of those fountain pens because then the ink can kind of flow and you can lead it around a little bit more. And then I'm filling in a little bit of the eye of my little bird, but I want to make sure I'm leaving that highlight that's in the eye because that's what's going to give your bird life. You know, because if it's totally black, it'll kind of look a little bit like a zombie. We don't want a zombie bird. So once I had that all outlined, then I could work on some of my shading. So some shading ideas would be hatching's kind of a fun one where you just kind of do, you know, parallel lines that kind of mimic the direction that the feathers are going in. Sometimes if your pen is running out, it really helps, you know, with this kind of technique. Because then all of my lines are really light and they're kind of just going in the direction of those feathers. But you want to make sure not put too much or else you'll end up with a hairy bird instead of a feathery bird. So even in these areas, I could do some little hatching, kind of going in the direction of these feathers. And then you can even kind of do almost like some feather texture. You know, where I'm kind of doing wavy lines. Because this one's a little bit more whimsical. So, and you can always add more later. So it's totally fine if you have some that you haven't, you know, fully feel done with. Like, I can still probably add, 
you know, more feathers behind some of the eyes, some more texture going on, but I can always add more of that later. So the first thing you want to do is start coming in with some of your yellow. So I'm going to move my palette over a little bit so y'all can see what colors I'm making. So I'm going to go with a cadmium yellow. Because it's a nice warm yellow. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of that on the chest of my bird because that's where most of my orange is. And there's a little bit on the face. And then while that's drying, I can always kind of work on some of the branch a little bit. Because if I work too much in this area, all my blues and my oranges are just going to bleed together. So for my branch, you know, you can make it kind of interesting, having fun colors. Um, in my reference picture, you know, my branch is kind of just this grayish brown which I might go with so then it doesn't compete too much with my bird. So I'm going to take some Van Dyke Brown, which is kind of just a dark brown. I'm going to add a tiny bit of ultramarine blue to it so it makes it kind of a grayish brown. And I'm just going to do kind of a light wash. I'm being careful to stay away from the wet areas. And I'm purposely leaving some little white highlights at the very top. And I'm going to take some darker brown and kind of just drop it in at the base of my branch. And what would be really great is if you had some salt, you could add a little bit of texture onto your branch because salt kind of helps to push away some of the pigment and leaves a really fun texture. So and then while that's drying, I'm going to take some cerulean blue and I'm just going to do a really light wash on the top of the beak because you can kind of see on kingfishers the top of the beak is lighter and it kind of has a little bit of reflected blue. And I'm going to put that same cerulean blue onto my wings and a little bit of the tail and they do have a little bit of white on their face you want to be careful not to go crazy and make everything blue And then next I could take some phthalo blue, which is a little bit of a darker blue, and I'm just going to kind of drop it in in some of the shadows. And by dropping it, I mean I'm not touching it very much, I'm just kind of looking for where the shadows are. Just letting it kind of go where it wants to go. And I waited a little bit, so this isn't really wet, so that's why it's not bleeding into my other lines very much. If I had you know, done both of these at the very same time, then everything would bleed together, which, you know, it isn't the end of the world. I've been able to save watercolors when that has happened, so that's perfectly fine. So and I'm just trying to leave some little white, because these kind of birds do have these little kind of speckles on them, so you don't want to go too heavy with your dark blue. And then I'm also going to do it on the head, where I'm going to try and leave... Some little white spots because if you look at the head of the kingfisher they have these little spots that are really light blue so the way I'm kind of making that is by kind of painting around that light color and just kind of giving the illusion of those little spots so again salting is kind of a fun technique to use in those areas since they do kind of you know repel pigment and they suck it up so it might be great for those spots. And I'm going to take some orange which you can make a great orange with cadmium yellow and a tiny bit of cadmium red. Um, you have to be careful and not use too much cadmium red because red takes over yellow very easily. 
See, just like that. Now it's super orange. <laughs> so I'm going to drop some of this orange down at the bottom of my little kingfisher. A little bit over here. I'm trying to leave some of that yellow. And then, you know, if your yellow is fading too much, you can always come back in and drop in some more yellow. You just want to make sure you don't go too heavy handed because you'll lose a little highlight on its belly. But I can always take kind of a slightly wet brush and lift a little bit off of there. I'm going to have to wait a little bit for up there. Let's go ahead and put some brown in the eye. So then again, I'm not touching my little highlight that's there. And I'm gonna take some Payne's Gray, which is a really nice dark bluey gray. And I'm gonna use that for some of the bottom of the beak. And then there's also a little bit of that dark that kind of bleeds into the eye, just around the eye. So I'm just lightly tapping in there. I've got a little bit for some of the shadows. I can even use a little bit on my branch because in watercolor a lot of times you want your colors to be fairly related. You know, where you have some colors that are in your bird, in your branch, vice versa. So for my background, I could always just throw in, you know, some blue. Just to kind of have fun with it around my bird. Um, I could also take some orange. And just leaving it really loose. Maybe even some Payne's Gray. So we don't necessarily have to do your background this way. You can always do it realistically and kind of have some dark greens in there, like far away trees. That's kind of up to you. And then it's all about layers. So, you know, mine just has kind of the beginning layers. So I would just kind of keep working on it, you know, waiting for some areas to dry. Um, and then, you know, the more I work on it, the more layers I'll be adding and another really great blue if you have it is called um, cobalt blue it's a really nice rich blue you can't really see on my picture very well from the camera but you know I kind of have some light blues some dark blues but cobalt blue is a really good blue too you know if you don't have cerulean And one of the probably last things I do is just adding a little bit of a shadow down here to kind of help separate the wing and the body. So that's how to kind of do a loose painting of a kingfisher. And then, you know, later on, once this is more dry, then I would come back in and darken some of my shadows. I could do some more layers on my beak. So all about layers.